Today, I will be talking to you about improving software quality and doing so with clear standards-based metrics. Um, before I do so, I will uh, address uh, the relevance of uh, software quality. Does software quality really matter? Um, and then I will proceed into, uh, into some details about what is software product quality. Uh, product uh, quality is a... Um, an interesting phenomenon, but it needs to be defined to be able to talk about it clearly, as, uh, as I announced in the title. Um, then I will proceed to the question, how can we measure software product quality? Is this something that is just a feeling, or is it something we can objectively measure? Um, I will, in the process of answering this question, discuss with you a uh, quality model and how we have constructed that um, uh, to be able to, to make, do such measurements. And I will uh, wrap up my presentation today with explaining to you how you can actually apply uh, a, a product quality measurement capability once you have developed it. And one of the pictures you see here on, uh, on the right is a uh, actual software uh, product quality uh, certificate um, that has been issued to uh, uh, the main registrar of, of uh, the Netherlands. And this is the final outcome that one can have from measuring and afterwards certifying software product quality, and I will uh, uh, tell you the deta details of this. So addressing the question, does software quality matter, um, I decided to let uh, the recipient of this certificate that I just showed you, uh, Case Toot, Director of ICT at the Dutch Foundation for Internet Domain Registration, uh, uh, answer this question for you. Uh, and just, I will read out his quote. Previously, we had a lot of minor faults, which have now all disappeared completely. Registers are benefiting from this demonstrably. Furthermore, we are now able to roll out six new software leases a year, whereas previously one a year was the maximum. This enables us to seize upon market wishes much faster and to achieve new things that were not possible in the past. So this is a uh, uh, experience of uh, um, a... Um, uh, decision maker in IT that has worked uh, with his team to raise software product quality and is reaping the benefits. And hopefully this will motivate you to listen to what I have to say in the rest of this webinar, uh, explaining to you how he has achieved this. Um, independent from his particular case, just to sketch to you what the relevance is of software quality, uh, I have this, uh, this uh, diagram for you. Um, Functional quality is something all stakeholders of a software system uh, find easy to perceive. A soft system works or not, has bugs or not, responds or not, uh, it's observable to, to all. And it's something that really matters to us, of course. Technical quality is something that remains hidden to more stakeholders, more, uh, most stakeholders. This is about has the software system be constructed in such a way that uh, changes whether they are enhancements or repairs of defects, can be made quickly with low cost, with low risk. Um, a software system can be of high functional quality but have very low technical quality, meaning at this moment in time it works, it does what it needs to do, high functional quality, but if we need to change it to adapt to new uh, business requirements, it is hard to change. Um, this is not a desirable situation, even though Currently, the functional quality might be good. In future, it will be great, simply because we know that business changes, business requirements change. We need to adapt all the time our software systems to keep, it, keep pace. And technical quality is, it will help you uh, um, uh, meet that pace. Uh, software with high technical quality can evolve with low cost and risk to keep meeting functional and non-functional requirements. So this is the relevance of uh, software quality, I believe, talking to you about today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, software quality is a, is a, is a um, concept that uh, may mean different things to different people. Um, and in fact, if we go out and ask people in, uh, in the software industry about quality, they, they have different concepts of this. So what I show here to you is the Bermuda Triangle of software quality. As you know, in the Bermuda Triangle, things tend to disappear. And here on the corners of the triangle, we see uh, quality notions and associated uh, standards um, 
and norms, uh, for instance, at the top regarding process. Um, a high quality process will lead, hopefully, uh, it is expected, will lead to good software products. Um, there's another point in this quality triangle, people, uh, people with high professional skills, uh, our high quality teams will produce good pro uh, products is the expectation. Um, on the level of projects, project management uh, methodologies, high quality in project management will hopefully lead to good products. But uh, in the center of the uh, triangle, what tends to disappear in the conversation is the product quality. Um, and this is um, the, uh, the, the thing I want to focus on. So if you go out and look where are the standards that, that help us uh, grasp this concept of software product quality, you will not find many things, but there are some. So the standard I want to zoom in on uh, today a little bit to help you understand what in terms of international standardization has been achieved around software product quality is the ISO standard 9126. Um, there's also a companion standard 14598, uh, which is of lesser importance. And I will take you quickly through this standard to, um, uh, to help you understand what um, value the, such a standard can have to you when you are working with software products. Um, so the software, uh, the uh, international standard 9126, entitled Software Engineering Product Quality, is the standard that describes uh, what we should understand by software product quality. Um, this standard is divided in a number of parts, and the first part is a quality model. And this is what I will zoom in onto and what I will walk you through in uh, simple terms to uh, make you understand what the uh, standard tells us and what it doesn't. Um, the first thing to notice when one opens this, uh, this, uh, this standard um, is that different perspectives on software product quality are defined here. Um, there are three. There is the perspective of internal quality, the perspective of external quality, and the perspective of quality in use. These perspectives, uh, basically uh, reading through between the lines, understanding what is in this formal language of the standard, what is meant, one quickly understands that this has to do with the phases the, of the life cycle in which the software product uh, is at any point in time. Um, internal quality is, are the quality characteristics that are observable when the software is still being built, but it's not necessarily executable. It's not necessarily uh, um, yet in operation or even in, in testing. External quality are the characteristics that can be observed uh, when, uh, when uh, the uh, system has gone into testing, so these are behavioral aspects. You can already observe the behavior of the system. And finally, quality in use is when the system goes into uh, a production environment and actually users are involved in the system. It's not purely testing anymore, not anymore the behavior during testing, but the behavior during actual use that can be observed. So these three perspectives exist, and the various parts of the international standard uh, go into more detail on these uh, various perspectives. I will focus today on internal quality um, for the reason that we are interested in looking at software product quality throughout the life cycle, from the very beginning when the first uh, lines of code are being written to the very end. And uh, internal quality is the appropriate perspective for that. If we zoom in on this perspective, we discover that the international standard 9126 on software product quality um, defines software product quality in terms of, of characteristics. And